focus was created with the idea of bringing the simplicity of mid-journey's intuitive and easy image prompting to an offline open source software. In other words, all the goodness of mid-journey for free using the power of your own computer while there are some great programs out there that let you create works of art with stable diffusion this way, such as Automatic 1111 and Comfy UI, they can be overwhelming for a beginner. Automatic 1111 is a bit easier to tackle, but it also comes at the cost of needing a higher base VRAM of at least six gigabytes, if not eight gigs, to accomplish anything, where Focus can work with as low as a four gigabyte NVIDIA GPU. However, six gigs is still recommended. These other programs can go deeper with stable diffusion, but Focus is very strong in its own right, and a perfect place for a brand new user who just want to create awesome AI-generated art without the hassle of a complicated UI. We're trying to figure out this. It should be noted that the program was specifically written for Windows and NVIDIA GPU users. AMD is supported, but not as extensively as NVIDIA. There are steps to install on Mac, but it is also not as supported as Windows. Here is a quick pros and cons to figure out if this is for you. Pros, easy to install and has a user-friendly UI. Lower VRAM requirements of six gigabytes, but four gig can work with some setups. Has its own embeds that can help get great results with shorter prompts, similar to mid-journey. Cons, it really comes down to the limitations. While it's still quite extensive, ultimately focus can't match the power and customization of something like Comfy UI. With all that, let's get started. Installing focus is very simple. Coming over to this GitHub page and scrolling down to here, click this link and download the software for Windows. If you have an AMD GPU, there is some changes to the RunBat once you unzip the file. Pretty simple, just right click and edit the RunBat file and add these lines. I don't have an AMD GPU, so I can only hope it's that easy. Unzip the file to wherever you like. You will then have these three bat files. Run bat is your go-to for everything, but you also have run anime and run realistic. For now, we will just stick with run bat. Go ahead and click it. The first time this is run, it will install the necessary files and models it needs. It will be a six gig download. Same goes for the other two bat files if you use them. Also, if you do have automatic 1111 or comfy UI installed, you can edit the config file. This will let you share the models between these programs so you don't have to download them more than once, which is incredibly useful as you can easily clutter up your hard drive with hundreds of gigabytes worth of models since many of them run around six gigs each. Make sure when putting in the location that you add the double backslash. It is needed for the config file to work. If you don't or even miss one backslash, you will get an error in the command window that will tell you it couldn't load the config file. Okay, now that focus is open, we can start using it right away. Type anything you want here. Let's say a Viking warrior. It will load two images like so. They don't look too bad. Background is so, so, but still. So let's look at the advanced settings. Here you can change the aspect ratios, easily clickable versus having to input the numbers yourself. Down here is the image number. This affects how many pictures it will create at a time. Let's stick with two for now. At the top is performance. Here is where you can increase quality or increase the speed. Obviously more speed will be less quality, but also less GPU VRAM. At the bottom is the negative prompt. Focus has its own embeds that do a pretty good job by itself. So you don't really need to use this, but the option is there. The random box is the seed, which will make for more random images with every generation. You can uncheck it if you would rather the seed stay the same. Next is the style menu. These will influence the look of the image and you can get completely different outcomes. Let's try digital art. Hmm, okay, well, how about pixel art? Wow, that's quite a bit different. So you see, you can really get a variety of styles and looks from all of these. Let's try one more. Game fighting game, okay. That's cool. Lots to try out and mix and match for sure. Then there is the model tab. Um, you can only use SDXL models for this. I don't have too many XL models myself, but Juggernaut is a good on its own. You can pick a refiner, but you don't need one for this model. 
You also have LoRa's you can choose. This comes with the pre-selected LoRa here for SDXL. At the bottom is refresh all files. If you download new models or LoRa's while this is open, you can hit this refresh button and they will show up in the list. In advanced tab, you can change the guidance, scale, and image sharpness sliders. Increasing guidance will make the image more vibrant and artistic, and increasing image sharpness will do exactly that and sharpen the image. Clicking the document here will bring up a very in-depth explanation of these two sliders. Don't worry about debug mode. Now down here we have this input image box. This brings up even more options. The first tab is upscale or variation. This is where you can upscale the image by 1.5 times or two times. You can load a new image here or just drag and drop a generated image from up top. And you can see it upscaled the image. A little variation, but still pretty much the same. You can vary the image either subtly or strongly. We can see if we can add a brighter background maybe. Hmm, doesn't look like much of a change. Let's try the strong setting. Okay, that definitely changed it quite a bit, but still true somewhat to the original. The other tab is Image Prompt. Here you can combine up to four images together. Click Advanced to get the extra settings. Now we can combine multiple images. And okay, well, there's that. Not quite what you would think. Let's try again. A little more accurate to both. Eyes kind of ugly, but you get the idea. We can try face swap and see how this goes. The stop at and wait settings don't really have good documentation that I've found, so you will have to mess around with them yourself. Uh, I am getting something, but not quite what I want. I got better results earlier, but not so much now, but I hope you get the idea here. We'll move on to in-paint and out-paint. Here you can use masks to replace an area using a new prompt. I will try to get a female face here instead. That worked, but weird random braid there. Oops. Let me see if I can fix that. Hopefully that worked. A bit better. Yeah, that's okay. You can also try to improve detail with the in-paint prompt. And also if you want to uh, add something into the scene, like a castle. Just going to mask this area out. And... Type in castle in the background and hit generate. That worked nicely. The last thing is the describe, which gives a description of the picture. Pretty simple. And that's about it. That is focus in a nutshell. I hope this information was a bit helpful for anyone here just getting started or wanting to know a little more about focus. If you have any questions or comments you would like to leave, please do, and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks, everybody.